Tarshish and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But even though it's a nursery rhyme, let me tell you something. You could have been Humpty Dumpty. I came in the church today limping on one leg, but yet I'm still here giving God the praise. I'm still here blessing his name. I'm still here giving him glory. Hallelujah. All taste and see that the Lord is good. Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? No, Devil, you failed, hallelujah. You tried it, but you didn't win. <laughs> I can laugh because when I laugh, it ain't funny to God. Because the enemy thought he had the victory. But God said, not so. God said, not so. Anybody up here can praise God for a not so today? Hallelujah. Not so. The condition could have killed you, but not so. at the BET Awards, I would say, y'all gonna make me lose my mind. Sister April, you got to trust him through it all. 
when you don't understand what in the devil is going on. I don't care what the devil has told you. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. I'm telling you, it's a lie. He's telling you, you ain't going to make it. It's a lie. He's Yeah. 
Jesus touch today. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 through 18. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the things given to many rebound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our right affliction, which is but for a moment, work it for us a far more and exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. Father, we thank you for ears to hear, hearts to receive. We thank you that your people shall be encouraged, backsliders reclaimed, and the word of faith shall come alive in our hearts and minds today. And we'll forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just for a few moments on today, I want to minister this word in your hearing. It's only temporary. Yes, Lord, it's only temporary. Come on, lay your hands on yourself and say, it's only temporary. It's only temporary. Test your faith. It's in those moments where you will discover what you really believe. Don't go too far. I'm not going to be long. To those moments that you will discover what you really believe and your actions will tell the story of it. It's one thing to say you're not scared of nothing until you're in a haunted house for fun. But fear grips you at the first sign of trouble and you're running in the opposite direction. I can testify because it was me. It's easy to say what you would do in a given situation. But it's not until you're the one that's in that situation. Yes, yes. Over the past three weeks, I was faced with the fight of uh, my life. It was a Monday, I was walking with a limp. It was a Tuesday, I was walking with a limp. And then by the time the midnight hour came, I got up to go to the restroom and I could not move. I because I couldn't understand why me, Lord, why me, Lord. And many of you today are in that situation where you're asking God the question, why you got to be the one always going through the test? Why you got to be the one always going through the storm? It seemed like every time you come out of something and it seemed like you got a little victory, you got a little joy, you got a little smile on your face. It seemed like something else is always happening that's taking a smile away and it's causing going to come at you if you don't have nothing to take from you. Yes, he's doing his job, but you have to do your job as a child of God. I say you got to do your job as a child of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says without you are going through, you got to have faith even when you don't understand. You got to have faith when you don't know how he's going to make a way. You got to have faith when you don't know how he's going to turn your situation around and I was in that situation and my faith was strong but I could not move so what do you do when your faith is strong but yet you're not seeing the manifestation of that which you have been believing God for want to worry her and then that morning I woke her up and I said baby I need to go to the hospital and she said okay she said we're going to the hospital and I said but I can't move I can't move and she was she was looking at me and she saw I saw major concern upon her face because when you love somebody you don't want to see them go through nothing and God loves you and he don't want to see you go through nothing but sometimes you Son is not always 
lights gonna shine. In life, sometimes you will cry. But watch this. Even though you may be crying today, you're not gonna be crying always. Why? Because it's only temporary. So my family, they got me out the house and put me in the car and got me to the hospital and put me in the wheelchair and they put me on morphine. And then I saw the doctor on, on the computer on Google trying to Google what my symptoms was. And I said, what in the world is this? You trying to Google what's going on with me instead of really finding out what the real issue is? Many of us have been going through things in our lives not knowing what the real issue is. It's always staying away. They got issues they've been dealing with. Could it be that they have been molested as a child and couldn't tell nobody and now they don't understand how to handle the situation? Somebody say it's real issues. Yeah, you got some real issues. You got real issues that you haven't told nobody about. You got real issues that you've been covering up, trying to sleep, sweep it under the rug. You got some real issues. You come to the church. You got your makeup on. Yet you were just crying in the car. And your eyes are swollen. Hallelujah. Because you've been crying so much. Wondering when relief is going to come. And then you got to take and reapply your makeup to cover up the pain that has been going on in your face. You've been dealing with all kinds of medicines. The oxycodone, the morphine, the, the dopamine. You got all. People think that it's the marijuana that's going to help ease the pain. The songwriter say, how can I ease the pain? She was trying to figure out how she can ease the pain. Some people try to ease their pain through the bottle, but the bottle is not going to work. The weed is not going to work. And then the real you is going to show again. And you got to deal with the issue all over again. So they sent me home in crutches. I said, God, this is not the life. This is not the life. Then I had Lady Moore while I was laying up there in the, the hospital bed to send out a message to the church. I need the saints to pray. to a flight. And if we are more than two, imagine all the thousands that's going forth on our behalf. That's why it's so important that what you, when you're going through, you don't stay away from the church. You come to the church. That's where you get your strength. When you come to the church, when you're weak, there are others who can pray you through to make you strong. Mighty God. I gained strength on this week looking forward to Sunday. Prophetess Ivy Robinson, she was she was out in the uh, out in Atlanta uh, serving the kingdom of God, doing some work. Let me tell you something, prophet see in part and know in part, but God never gives us the full picture. I'm going to say that again. This is the prophetic lesson for you. Prophets see in part. We know in a long time ago. Come on now. And the Lord led her to FaceTime me. She's right there. She can testify. The Lord led her to FaceTime me. And when she FaceTimed me, I was in my house. I told Lady Moore, I said, call the, call the ambulance. I'm going to the hospital. Because my condition had got worse. I had been in my living room, could not move, with my legs reclined. Couldn't go to the bathroom. Help me to just get a sigh of release in that moment. 
And there are some things you are going through, hallelujah, you're going to get a release in the moment. Because God knows when he's going to bring you through and how he's going to bring you through. And everything you go through is... Be strong. It doesn't matter if you got to go to the doctor or go to the hospital. Doctors are here for a reason. They let you know what to pray for. So the woman of God was showing me the conference. And I was waiting. The woman of God can get a prayer in with me and my wife. One can chase a thousand. Two can put 10,000 to a flight. And if she's the third one in agreement, that's more than 10,000 right there. Let me tell you, those prayers are multiplied. And it couldn't get me out the house through the paramedics because I was in so much pain. And they had to call the fire department. The fire department came in the house and they had to pick me up and put me in a specialized chair. It was excruciating pain. I had not walked. They carried me out, put me on the stretch. People don't understand. You can't tell everything in the moment. You got to wait until you get the victory sometime. Because watch this. If you tell everything before you get the victory, you're going to have people praying premature prayers that they don't even understand. The church knew the pastor had to go to the hospital. All they knew was the doctor Googled that it must be sciatica, uh, a herniated disc. Y'all know I've been on this work loss journey. I've lost over 100 pounds now in two months and a couple weeks. I'm in the word. I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm in the word. I'm telling you, it's going to get better. And look, and they was telling me, they were saying, because you lost the weight so fast. It caused your joints to sh so that's what they that's what they used to call me sometimes, Mother Taylor. Said, look, look, look at my son, old Oompa Loompa. You know Now in the springs, the springs in the bed, brothers and tell, the bed goes down and it adjusts to take on the mold of your body. But then when you get up, it rises back to where it's supposed to be. So when the weight is taken off, what was once crunched down is no longer crunched, and now it's springing up, and now you look a little taller than what you was before. It's because the weight has been kept and you compacted down. What you're going through right now is only for a moment. You don't know how long it's going to be before you get the manifestation, but you got to keep trusting and depending upon his word. His word says he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities, and the chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with his stripes I am. But sickness has a grip on your life. You got to keep standing upon the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not. Come out of you. See, it's easy when you you uh, you spend years in the dope game. And you know how uh, how to take a hundred and go and flip that hundred, and uh, then you're gonna get that get that money back, and then you take that money and you keep going flipping it and flipping it, flipping. Your money is going to continue to grow, and then when you say I'm not gonna be in the game no more, I'm a changed person, and then you a changed person, but yet you keep looking at. back in the game because this little money you get right now, that's not going to work. That money you work and making on the job, that's not going to work. You used to having five G's in two days. But now you're making a hundred dollars and some change. This is not going to work. What you believe is going to be the thing 
that's going to speak to you the loudest. And in the midst of everything I was going through, I was laying there, God, I know you've already healed my body. I'm just praising you for the man. And I couldn't stay. And a doctor would come in the room and they say, do this and do that. And I told him, I can't do it. I can't do it. And the man, he took my leg and he put it up and he was swinging. And I said, man, what are you doing? I can't do it. Sir. I said, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but you went to school, you only have a degree of knowledge, but you don't have the pain that I'm dealing with right now. And it's easy for you to tell somebody, oh, you're going to make it, you're going to come through it if you ain't never been through it before. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. That's why when Going through it right now. I went through it before, and if he brought me out, he can do the same for you. And I'm telling you today, what you're going through right now is only temporary. And doctor came in the room and he he said, he said, we're gonna have to get you some physical therapists. We the edge of the bed. And it took about 35 more minutes just for me to stand up on my feet. And they say, take one step. I say, I can't do it. They say, come on, take one step. I say, I can't move my leg. They say, come on, take. Moving the right leg, but I couldn't move the left leg because when you walk, your body is going side to side. The weight is shifting. So, when I was able to finally just move this leg to the side, I couldn't take When you're going through, you're going to be faced with a lot of weight and a lot of trials. And those weights are coming to hold you down and weigh you down. And I couldn't do it. And it did Missionary Kim, I got crutches at home that the doctor gave me. I got the walker that the doctor gave me. I got a bedside commode that the doctor gave me. Because man said, you won't be able to do it. My daughter and bring my daughter to go and play for the New Orleans All-Star Band in, uh, in Atlanta. And I said... I said, no, uh, cross the river. I said, I'm coming for that ride. Amen. I'm coming for that ride. Three weeks not being able to just get up. Because see, the enemy want to keep you down. But small victories become big victories. Let me tell you, you got to learn sometime when you are in a fight of your life, you may lose some rounds, but just because you may have lost a round, that does not mean you have lost the fight. And my wife know one of my favorite movies of all time is Rocky Balboa. And sometimes Rocky got whooped in some rounds, but then he said... Shot. And then uh, the person he was fighting, he would hit him with his best shot. And he was like, come on, come on. And to other people, it don't make sense. Yeah, yeah. It's not what you saw, that what you see is only temporary. And I saw myself walking. So what I was dealing with was only temporary. And I got up out that seat and I got that walker and I walked out the house. I said, I need to get fresh. He said, say no more. He came to the house, and he got your boy looking all fresh, fried, died, and made to the side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when you're going through, it may look hard for you in the moment, but I'm telling you, in a minute, you're going to be able to stand. You're going to be able to make it through. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Somebody say, I'm going to make it.
Say it one more time. I'm not going to make it. My wife had to come with a soap and a towel and a bucket and clean me up in the living room because I couldn't go nowhere else. I was laying down. Missionary, she was up preaching. Didn't that woman even preach on that district council? Yes, she did. I said, did she preach? Y'all, yes, y'all, y'all ain't see the way she preached. Yes, when she went to kicking those shoes, I went to kicking my feet, and I wasn't able to kick those feet before. She kicked, she kicked them heels. I said, Lord, she about to bust us to earn in the head with them heels. Hallelujah. I said, come on now. I said, if she can do it, I'm going to do it too. And I start kicking those feet and I start boxing with my hands. And I start getting excited. Why? Because if God can do it for one, he can do it for me. Yeah. See, the situation may not be the same. Hallelujah. But he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yeah. People up. Yeah. See, the Bible, the Bible told Moses, hallelujah, when he was getting ready to raise Joshua and other people up who was going to, who was going to go before and help him in the work of the ministry. He said, you got to build them up in the eyes of the people. Y'all don't know. I be building these people up in the eyes of the people. Why? Because you got to understand and respect the anointing and the grace that's upon people's lives. Hallelujah. Don't let the good looks fool you. She get the mic, it's over. I'm going to let you have words today, just so you know. Get yourself together. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that's one of my best friends in the world, Evangelist Sherry Hosea. Y'all My mama would call me on the phone. She said, you ain't walking yet. I said, Ma, I said, I just told you. The If it wasn't my mom, I promise you I would have hung up that phone. I had to mute the phone. I said, what's wrong with this lady? Come on, you got to get up. And I'm encouraging you today to tell you, you got to get up. You ain't out that situation yet. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says to everything there is a season. Yeah, I know you was up there laying down and you couldn't walk, but God, that time is over. You got to get out from there. I was laying in that bed and I called my mom and I'm talking to her and she said, Pastor, I know you got up and you're feeling something good for a lady to cook you a nice meal. I said, no, she haven't cooked yet. She didn't cook yet with ivory. That's the game what's going on in my house. I say, my, everything good. She said, you ain't walking yet. I say, yes, ma'am, I'm walking. And in my spirit, I felt like I lied to my mama. But then, no, I didn't. My faith kicked in. I said, okay, okay, okay. You ain't walking yet? I say, honey, I'm getting ready to go take a bath. I'm about to get up. I say, yeah, don't say that. Say that again, Missionary Janine. Don't say what you had said before. All right. Some people that's gonna encourage you, all right. And look, let me tell you, stuff like that buck me up, all right. Yeah, I'm about to walk today. Walk it out, walk it out, walk it out. I say, yeah, I'm about to walk today. And I stood up. 
Y'all see how fast that boy getting up? Woo! You did something when you laid the hands on me. Hallelujah. Do it for the vine. I ain't gonna do it. Y'all know, y'all know. Do it for the vine. I am the true vine. I'm connected to the vine. Yeah. And look, I got I got on the edge of the bed and I said, I'm going, to, I'm going to get me a bath today. And I got up and I told Lady Mo, I said, just get the walker ready. Hallelujah. And then she got it. And I took the step. I said, oh, he doing it. And then I took another step. you're going through got a voice pain has to go in Jesus name you gotta speak to your situation and tell your situation what's gonna happen but you gonna line up in the name of Jesus I command this day that you show up and I got on the walk and I start walking I start walking and I start walking I got excited I got excited and I made it to the bathroom door on the water and I turned it hot because you know hot water make you dance. Hallelujah. And then I, I took one leg and I put one leg in the shower. I said, oh Lord, you're moving. I got the leg up high now. I'm about to put the other leg in the shower. Then I put the other And I start cleaning myself and I say, oh Lord. And I start feeling good and I just felt the things that was holding me down begin to fall off me. And I just begin to wipe myself down. And I called Lady Mo in the bathroom and I told her, I said, wipe me down. Wipe me down. Wipe me down. Wipe me down. Each side wipe me down. One side wipe me down. She started wiping me down. And I'm up there and I'm praising God in the shower. And I'm giving God praise in the shower. Wipe me your trust in God. Yes, I know he will deliver and you may not understand what he's going to do it, but you got to know that he's the same God. of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. And just like he delivered them, he's going to deliver me. Just like he delivered them, he's going to deliver you. Nahum 1 and 9 says, check this out. He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. The second time. That sounds like a one and done to me. That sounds like I got the victory to me. Is because you ain't passed the test. So in your test, are you going to murmur and complain? Or are you going to bless the Lord in spite of everything you're going through? Bless the Lord at all times. And this praise shall continually be in my mouth. God told Moses, the same Egyptians you see today, 
You will not see them no more. Then you got some afflictions. Amen. Uh huh. You've been crying and hurting and going through. But you ain't getting stuck. Yes. Yes. You ain't walking yet. Yeah, I walk to the church. Go online. I walk to the church. I walk in the church. And I gave God the Charles Brown and Lady Connie Brown. They called me. Say, Pastor. Say, I was calling to check on you. He said, what you doing? I said, I'm out of the car with my wife. He said, you out in the car? I said, yeah. I got up. Get back inside. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our superintendent, Ronnie Crockett, he called Pastor Moore, calling to check on you. I say, I'm getting better every day. But I'm going to be at church Sunday. I told him, even if I have to go up in the church with a walker, I'm going in church with my walker. I'm going to tell it what to do. You got to come in agreement with the word of God. And could it be that's the reason why our storms last so long? Because we have not come in agreement with God's word for our lives. The woman with the issue of blood, she was bleeding for 12 long years. The Bible says she spent everything she had trying to get a cure. But it wasn't until she got with the chief physician. to hinder the move of God. This light affliction is only going to last for a moment, but it's working for us and for more, and it's exciting.
something supernatural going on the inside. Hallelujah. But you also heard what I'm coming out of. And today, I want to encourage you that you can come out today. If you're not saved and you want to be saved, I want to offer Christ to you today. If you're not saved and you want to be saved, come on, stand where you are. Say this prayer with me, Lord. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for my sins. Father, I thank you that you're forever married to the backslider. You will never leave me nor forsake me. Lord, thank you for giving me the strength to make it through my test, make it through my trial, make it through my storm. But I thank you that you didn't leave me without hope. And I recommit my life to you today. Amen. Can we thank God for the two that recommitted their lives today? I want to offer you the prayer to our church of God in Christ. Is there anyone here today that does not have a church home and you want to become a part of the prayer to our family? Hallelujah. Come shake my hand. Hallelujah. I want to be your pastor. I want to love you through everything that you're going through. Hallelujah. Is there one on today? Is there one on today?
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah.